Mr. Patrick Seal, you are authority on Syria. Where do you see the situation going at this stage, especially as you can see, uh, President Bashar Assad is sitting there and practically, uh, you know, insists on fighting till uh, he achieves what he wants. While the opposition as well, in a position saying, okay, we are not going to sit in a government where he's sitting. So what is, like, you know, uh, the, the intention of both parties now? Unfortunately, both sides still think they can win. And until they understand that neither side can win, I'm afraid this struggle will continue and the country is being destroyed. So every effort must be made, I think, to bring them to the table. Now this means, first of all, that the superpowers, the United States and Russia, must impose a ceasefire on both sides, not just on one side only. Unfortunately, the Western powers are now thinking of arming the opposition. This, in my view, is a great mistake. It will simply prolong the struggle. So what is required, really, is to seal off Syria, perhaps deploy a UN force around its borders to stop weapons and fighters coming in, and impose a ceasefire on both sides and bring them to the table. This is the only way. All, all, all wars have to end with a negotiation, one way or the other. If this war is allowed to continue, Syria will just be a, a, a field of rubble, of ruin, and everybody will suffer. With the kind of negotiation going between uh, Russia and the United States and the West in general, do you think there will be some kind of agreement on how to handle the situation in Syria in the near future? I hope so, and I think so. I think the United States is now frightened of Jabhat al-Nusra, you can't fight al-Qaeda across the world and, and support it in Syria. So there's been a change in Western perceptions. The Russians are also worried at the rise of militant Islam. Don't forget, they too have, have, a, have, a, have a worry about that. So I think the climate, we are approaching a moment when the two powers, the United States and Russia, will, I think, come together and impose a ceasefire. This is my hope. If it doesn't happen soon, then this will destabilize the whole, the whole region. As you know, countries like Turkey, uh, Lebanon, uh, Iraq, Jordan are suffering under the burden of refugees. The human cost is colossal. So something must be done to stop the fighting. You have wrote your famous book on uh, President Hafez al-Assad and Syria. What difference between the late Hafez al-Assad and his son Bashar? Well, don't forget, Hafez al-Assad was really the creator of modern Syria. He was there for 30 years. I mean, he tried uh, his best to make it a strong country and to keep it at peace in the region. Don't forget, we've seen Iraq being destroyed, Algeria suffering a civil war, Lebanon having a civil war. Uh, Syria, until these, these last two years, was at peace with the region. Well, his son, I think, inherited Syria at a very difficult moment. You see, the, the, the United States and Israel in particular were both putting tremendous pressure I mean, the invasion of Iraq, for example. Uh, Bashar al-Assad knew that if the United States was successful in Iraq, then Syria would be the next target. So, of course, he, his, mind, his mindset was one of conspiracies. And then he saw that Israel attacked Lebanon 2006, attacked Syria 2007, attacked Gaza 2008. These were all regime-threatening moments for him. So in brief, you, 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 you are saying that he was ill-advised. Well, I mean, he, I think his judgment of what was happening in the region was perhaps mistaken. And when Dara happened, he should have immediately gone to Dara himself, apologized to the parents, sacked the governor. He'd have been a hero. Unfortunately, he resorted to live fire, and that has been a strategy all along. And, and that, I think, was a huge mistake. Now, with tens of thousands of people killed in Syria, what kind of future, what kind of country are going to see? Well, this is the great problem. The problem is to retain Syria as a united country and not to allow it to be dismembered, to be split. And this is the big danger, the big... Uh, that. Uh, you know, Iraq, Iraq was partially dismembered. After all, you now have a semi-independent Kurdish. 
Because the Kurds in Syria want independence. The, 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 the minorities are terrified. And so everything has to be done to maintain the unity of Syria. And that's why I think the great powers have a very serious responsibility in stopping the fighting, stopping the flow of weapons and fighters into the country and bringing both sides to the table. What impact continuation of this fighting in Syria would have in Lebanon and Iraq and other neighboring countries? Well, it is, it is having already a huge destabilizing impact. I mean, in, in Lebanon, as you know, the situation is highly dangerous. There are huge numbers now of, of refugees there, and the country is literally breaking apart. In, in Turkey, who, who would imagine that Turkey is now suffering from its from huge numbers of refugees? And also the Kurdish problem has reasserted itself. In Iraq, the same. The whole region has been destabilized. So it is very, very important, I think, for the great powers to come together now and impose a settlement on the warring parties in Syria. Mr. Patrick Seale, the famous British writer and author, thank you very much. Thank you.